Hello, brilliant 3D Jewelry channel. Welcome to this new video. Today, I'm going to recreate one of my favorite jewels in human history, one of Tutankhamun's sacred pectorals. This one is very famous, and we can see the amazing craftsmanship that the Egyptians jewelers already possessed. Thousands and thousands of years ago, every element in this design is symbolic of the king and divinities. Each element in this jewel has a lot of history to tell, and this is exactly what jewelry design and art are all about. Today, we're going to revive it and model it in Blender. Obviously, we're going to start modeling the scarab. Add mesh plane. So, trade it mode, merge at center. I'm going to start with the general shape. So, the scarab represents the god Kepri, the god of the morning sun. He's an aspect of the sun god Ra. So, obviously, here the scarab a solar symbol. The scarab is symbol of rebirth of transformation, transmutation, to bring protection to the pharaoh, through the cycle of life and death. There's many legends about the gemstone, about the mineral. This gemstone has always been imbued with mystery. It's often referred to as a meteoric glass or a Libyan desert glass. Some books also say that this is a type of quartz, chalcedony to be exact. And there are many theories about the origin of this gemstone. So the theories talk about the explosion of a meteor in the desert and the heat of that meteor created this special mineral. The analysis do show that this is not just a normal quartz but what's important to understand is that the color and the warmth that radiates from this gemstone is amazing so the jewelers when they chose this specific gemstone made the perfect choice to make the scarab to represent capri the sun god we can really feel even in the picture we can feel the warmth radiating from the gemstone so meteor glass libyan desert glass quartz actually i do prefer libyan desert glass it's more poetic and also has the link to the region to the deserts and gemstones must always convey that poetic side of their origin now the legs of the scarab with many details here that's why this jewel is so amazing about the quality of the craftsmanship but also about the life of the jewelers and the jewelry designers there were slaves so that's a topic we need to talk about because there are sources about that reality back then jewelers and jewelry designers were not independent freelancers at all they were slaves to the pharaoh and that's not the only thing if the jewelers failed to please of the pharaoh's wishes for his jewelry well basically they would lose their heads and in fact it's not the only empire that had the same behaviors with their jewelers the jewelers were slaves jewelry designers they were the same people that's also a very interesting topic we need to talk more about that some other day the jewelers were slaves they had to make the best jewels for their ruler for the emperor for the pharaoh for the king and any failure would result in them losing their heads okay let's make the inlay this is lapis lazuli let's copy the legs shift g let's go to edit mode so what we need here is the lowest floor let's erase the rest i'm going to inset this slightly more the solidify modifier is going to go in a specific direction, minus one or one. Well, they would simply get killed. So bear in mind that was a huge motivation, to say the least. And here we are in the comfort of our office, designing 3D jewelry on our computers as free independent people, as jewelers, as jewelry designers, but anyway, I would say that as a professional, you should always do your best and try to achieve excellence. So these Egyptians, jewelry designer and jewelers, obviously were thriving for excellence. They had a much simpler motivation to stay alive. These are the scarab's legs. They're carrying a lot of symbols, and that's why I made the legs first. Save and be happy. So now about the wings. 
Technically, this is a perfect example of cloisonné enamel. On this jewel, we do have gemstones, but we also have glass enameling, the old-fashioned way with glass paste, molten glass making the colors. So we have a gold base, solid gold, cut to the shape, and then we have hundreds of small compartments. These are called the cloisonné, making the places for the glass to be molted in and make the enamel. So just imagine the technical level that the Egyptian jewelers had. This is fantastic. So here in 3D, it's important that I model each cloisonné. And then also it's important that I model each part of glass, because if you only do that with textures, or if you don't model each element, the final look won't be very interesting. When modeling each part, I'm going to have smooth edges and that's really important for the glass rendering. So in this occasion, that's a bit more work than just gold and gemstones or gold and diamonds. But remember, jewelry is not only about gold and diamonds. There are many other materials and many other techniques for designing jewelry. Here I have completed the enamel cloisonné on the wings and the tail. So that pops the question, what bird is it? Almost all the sources will tell you that this is a falcon, and that's pretty logical. The scarab represents the god Kepri. It's an aspect of the sun god Ra. And obviously up here, guess who is standing next to the pharaoh? The sun god Ra Orakti, with his representative falcon head and the solar disk above his head. That's the connection between the scarab and the sun god Ra. So logically, these are falcon wings, legs, and tail. But some sources say that these are vulture wings and tail. And that's pretty interesting, even if it's unlikely to be correct in this case, especially because of the date. Tutankhamun lived around the year 1330 BC. And at that time, most of the gods were united and one of the most important gods was Ra. But the sources saying that these are vultures, wings, and tail refer to the vulture goddess Nechbet. And yes, indeed, pretty often we have scarabs with vultures, wings, and tail. But that used to be much earlier in Egypt. What happened then is that Nechbet, the vulture goddess, is always related to the serpent goddess, the Egyptian cobra. Wajit is the goddess of the real world, of the delta of the Nile, of the land of the living. She has a solar disk on her head. That's the typical representation of Wajet. So here the connection is that over time, Wajet and Nechbet became systematically represented together. Because Nechbet, the vulture goddess, is goddess of Upper Egypt, and Wajet is goddess of Lower Egypt. So over time, with the unification of Egypt, became united under the rule and power of the pharaoh. So the two goddesses were represented together almost all the time. And that's why some sources talk about vultures in this jewel, because at that time, if you had Wajet somewhere, Nechbet had to be here also. But generally, in much jewels, when you have the scarab, the wings and tail are going to be from the falcon, that is the symbol of Ra. What I need to do now is model the legs of the falcon. We can see the amazing textured details on the legs of the falcon. Here we have a small ank detail left and right, symbol of eternal life. And that concept is reinforced by this symbol that the falcon is holding. This is the Shen symbol, symbol of infinity, completeness, and protection. And the bird is holding a papyrus flower and a lotus flower. And that comes to reinforce the concept that the lower part of the pectoral represents Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt, the land of the living, the real world. Remember, Wajit is goddess of the land of the living. The flowers are very realistic symbols. Down here we have more papyrus flowers as beads. We can see that we have a gold wire going through the hinges that are visible here and there to 
hold the beads. These elements have movements. And then we have these very realistic poppy seeds and poppy flowers, giving the final touch to the composition of the lower part of the pectoral. So we can see here, we have very natural and realistic elements. Wajit, the Egyptian serpent goddess, with the solar disk above her head. She's protecting the journey of the scarab, protecting the pharaoh in his journey to the afterlife. Parting from his power and ruling over all Egypt, upper and lower Egypt united here, represented by their flowers and their colors, the realm of the living, the Egyptian cobra and the sacred sun scarab are guiding the pharaoh under their protection through his cosmic journey giving the pharaoh all the tools he needs and all the guidance and protection he needs to successfully complete his journey to the afterlife and be reborn to eternal life. The elements on the lower part of the pectoral are more terrestrial elements and connecting to the cosmic world. So now the top part of the pectoral. Up here we have an Egyptian boat, a lunar boat, as it represents the path that the moon takes across the nightly sky. The boat has a turquoise inlay. It's the main protective stone of the pharaoh and all the Egyptians. So turquoise, thanks to its bright blue color, represents the sky, but it also represented joy and fertility. So that connects the turquoise to the goddess Athor, goddess of joy and fertility. And Athor was always one of the most important divinities in Egypt. That obviously helps understanding the importance of the turquoise gemstone for all the Egyptians. Egypt did have important turquoise mines, so that further helped the turquoise to be a very esteemed gemstone. The importance of the turquoise as the protective gemstone against all types of dangers, one of the most important gemstones for the pharaohs. In the lunar boat, we have turquoise representing the sky, representing the cosmic journey, and extending the protection to the pharaoh. Then inside the boat, we have two Urais, or Egyptian cobras, Wajit, with the solar disk yet again. And here in the middle, we have one of the most important symbols or amulet in Egyptian history, the Eye of Horus, or also the Eye of Ra. So there are many legends and mythology connected to the origin of this symbol. Something we need to remember, it's more than one eye. Over time, it came to represent the sun and the moon, even if it's mainly a solar symbol. So here, in connection with the other symbols, the eye and the two cobras are protecting the journey of the boat in its cosmic voyage. And they are holding the lunar disk, the crescent moon, and the full moon disk, where the pharaoh Tutankhamun, standing in the middle with a lunar disk, crescent moon, and moon above his head, protected by the god Tot on the left side with an ibis head. Tot is the famous god of wisdom and knowledge and scriptures. He's also god of the moon. And remember up here on the right side, we have Ra Oracti with the falcon head and the solar disk on his head. And that's very interesting. The cosmic journey of the pharaoh to the afterlife with all the symbols of protections also in the afterlife. And he is guided and protected by two gods. And all the symbols are representing the moon and the sun. And also there's a connection of the eye of Ra with the morning star or Venus. So again, every element in this jewel were very specifically chosen thanks to their protective power and their specific meanings to create a jewel completing a full circle. And now thanks to the lunar boat, the pharaoh is guided and protected in his cosmic journey, is traveling through the cosmos to the afterlife thanks to the winged scarab the two Egyptian cobras, thanks to the turquoise, with the presence and protection of Thoth, god of the moon, and Ra, god of the sun.
the power of the moon and the sun united the eye of Ra to fulfill his entire life and death circle and to be reborn successfully to eternal life. I really doubt that this spectral was made for the pharaoh and used by the pharaoh during his life. From what we know, this spectral was found in one of the chests in the tomb of Tutankhamen, in the Anubis chest, connecting obviously with the afterlife, with the world of the dead. So this spectral very probably was made for the pharaoh after his death. So this is a very powerful protective spectral. And from my understanding, and comparing also to many other jewels, I really think that this jewel was made for a very specific task in the afterlife of the pharaoh.